Hey guys, welcome back to my uh, train videos. Uh, today we are going to be doing a video on a Lion Chief ready to run set. Now this is new for me because I've never purchased a ready to run set before, obviously because if you've watched my videos, you know that I am uh, a scale modeler. So obviously I have all the high-end legacy engines on my layout and I've never had to buy a ready to run set. So, but one came out, uh, was just released, that I couldn't pass up, uh, cause it's one of those things that just, uh, sort of goes back to your childhood memories, and this is it. So, the big unveiling, so, Lionel just released the, uh, Lion Chief set of Scooby-Doo. So, Scooby-Doo was my favorite cartoon when I was a kid, I used to watch it every Saturday morning. Uh, love the little mysteries they always had on it and when I saw this set Lionel releasing these theme sets and one of them was the mystery machine set which is the uh, Scooby-Doo set so uh, I just couldn't pass it up so obviously this is a Lion Chief uh, ready to run set so we'll talk about what Lion Chief is if you're not familiar with it and um, how these sets work but this is such a cool set uh, and the graphics on these cars are so neat. So uh, we're going to review the uh, Lion Chief Ready to Run set, kind of how Lion Chief works, and then um, how it would work on my legacy layout, because my layout is 100% legacy. That's all I have on there. And so obviously this is controlled a little differently. So we'll go over all that and review all those different things. Okay, so what is a ready to run set? So Lionel, historically, uh, since the 70s, has had two lines in their catalogs. They've had sort of the premier top of the line engines, which uh, today relate to the legacy engines, which are, of course, the very highly detailed scale engines. So like the H10 I just did a review on yesterday. I mean, this is a you know solid die cast metal engine. Uh, you know, these are basically scale models of the real thing, down to the finest details. They have the latest uh, sophisticated electronics in them. You know, they, you know, you have all the uh, things like fan-driven smoke units, whistle steam, swinging bells, you know, the incredible rail sounds that are in them, the, uh, you know, slow speed control, the whole thing. So obviously those are controlled with that, you know, comp you know sophisticated legacy remote that has you know just tons and tons of features and um, these engines of course are you know very expensive highly detailed types of engines right and so you know legacy engines run anywhere from um, actually this is probably the cheapest one I ever purchased which was 675 all the way up to two thousand dollars per engine so I mean these are highly detailed scale models and then they've had their ready to run line which is basically the almost like what I call the toy line for um, sets that people would buy in the stores just for like maybe their kids or running around the Christmas tree or something like that so what you're seeing here actually is my first train set which is this uh, Southern Express is what they called it and it actually came in a, just a foam box um, it was like a foam base with just a cardboard cover on it and you can see it's a very uh, toy like uh, cheap train basically has no features in it whatsoever you basically just have forward and reverse and that's pretty much it there's no smoke no sounds no nothing um, they did have sort of a mechanical sound on the uh, tender here. If I disconnect it for a second, you can kind of hear it. Which is just a bunch of beads running around in, in this little uh, ring here underneath it that rides along the center rail. So these are, you know, lightweight, uh, cheap plastic engines. They are, you know, you can see the gearing on the side. They're just toys, basically, is what they are. Okay, so that's the ready-to-run lines. And so Lionel's always had those two lines. Um, 
you know, the cars that came with those ready-to-run sets, like in this one, the old ones here, they weren't even painted. They're just uh, colored plastic with some graphics, plastic uh, trucks on them, you know, nothing like the uh, premier stuff that they make. So that's what a ready-to-run set is. And so I would never really have a ready-to-run set on my layout because I'm using all the uh, high-end legacy stuff. Now, uh, about five years ago, Lionel created a new line called Lion Chief. And so the Lion Chief, again, are the sort of ready-to-run sets. So they're complete sets. So basically you get, you know, track, you get a, a, like usually a round uh, circle or oval track. You've got the train set, which usually includes an engine and maybe like four cars. And then in this particular case now, they have the remote instead of what they used to have, which was just a transformer. So typically, previously, you would receive a small transformer, um, something like, you know, this. This is a little big. You wouldn't get this big of transformer. But basically, you controlled it with the lever forward and the direction, and that's pretty much it. You didn't have a lot of features on it. didn't really do much. But now, they have the Lion Chief and the Lion Chief Plus lines, which again, they released about five years ago, the Lion Chief first came out. And they only had uh, one or two sets when they first released it. And they didn't have an app to control it yet. So it was just the uh, set and you, you got a remote that came with it. And so that remote was paired particularly to this engine and only this engine in the set. And what's nice about it is, uh, we'll open it up so you can see, but basically you, you got Fast Track, which is snaps together. You had a uh, power pack that just plugged into the wall and then plugged into the track. There was no wiring required. And you put your engine on the track and put batteries in your remote and you were set to go. So this was a big jump forward for Lionel for ready to run sets. Now again, the ready to run sets are not scale models or details, but they've actually, when they went to the uh, Lion Chief line, uh, it got a little more sophisticated and the engines are pretty nice actually. Um, and so they're not as cheap as they used to be on the ready to run line set. So for somebody just wanting something for Christmas or something around the tree or just giving something to a kid that's not ready for the high end scale models, these things are perfect. And so they've had some standard freight sets and things like that that they released over the years. But Lionel has recently started doing these theme sets. So they've had like a, uh, <clears throat> they did a, Hot Wheels theme, they have like a Batman theme, they did a couple bunch of themes. So this is one of the latest ones for 2018 and I couldn't pass it up because uh, again as a kid I love Scooby-Doo and um, the graphics on this are really cool. So now these theme sets it seems that some of them stick around and they keep reproducing them every year and then other theme sets seem to disappear. So there were some theme sets that they released and they've only been out for that one year and then they never came back so I'm not you never know with these theme sets if they're gonna stick around or not so depending how popular they are um, of course Lionel has to pay a royalty probably to Warner Brothers for the Scooby-Doo uh, graphics and all this kind of stuff so um, you never know if these are gonna be a one-time thing and then um, you know you know, may 50 years from now these may be a little valuable because uh, you know they were hard to get and you can't find too many of them or if it's just going to be something repeating so for instance the Harry Potter Hogwarts set when they released that they've been making that every year and so that's something they just keep reproducing but I'm not sure if the Scooby-Doo set will be the same way or not but regardless it's just a cool set and um, I had to pick it up just to have it even even though I probably won't run it a lot just to uh, have it for display so so that's the difference. Now, the Lion Chief Plus, which came out, I think, about two years ago when they uh, started the Lion Chief Plus, they're basically the same as the Lion Chief, except they have a little more features. The Lion Chief Plus allows you to either do the remote or you can do the transformer if you want to do the old uh, standby transformer control, which I'm not sure why anybody would, but it's available. They can run an AC or DC power. And then um, the other thing is they have just a couple more features. So for instance, the Lion Chi sets do not have like a remote uh, electromagnetic real coupler, um, but the Lion Chief Plus ones do, um, and a couple of little feature. Also the Lion Chief uh, Plus ones, they have mostly 
they're sold not as sets but as separate engines and they have a little more detail so I would call them sort of the mid-range between the ready-to-run sets and the high-end legacy engines um, so let's open up the Scooby-Doo set and see what we get inside here okay first off uh, for some reason Lionel did not put a, a flap on here they can open and close they used hot glue to glue the top off so um, even though it's not a big deal uh, the graphics on this box are really cool and again if you're trying to like save the box and you know for the future in case uh, you know in case these do become a little rare or, or something like that it'd be nice to have the box in intact so um, I just used a putty knife here to you know make a nice uh, to open it so I didn't rip the uh, rip the top uh, to break it away from the glue so I don't know why they couldn't have just put a normal uh, box in that opens and closes but just FYI for these ready to run sets looks like they're just gluing the flap on so if you don't want to destroy the box get a putty knife or something and then uh, you won't wreck the uh, the box itself okay so again if you're not familiar with the line chief sets you're gonna get a uh, transformer here which just plugs into the wall and this plugs into the track so again super easy uh, setup here we're not going to need this because uh, our layout has 18 volts on the track already so obviously we wouldn't need that that's just if you're going to run a set of the track around the tree or something like that um, you're going to get a remote and this remote is going to be specific to this engine so you can see it says the mystery machine on it and so if you have multiple Lion Chief engines or sets each one gets their own specific remote that's programmed to it now like I said in my other video you can buy a universal remote that can have up to three engines on it instead of having a separate one so if you let's say you have uh, two or three uh, Lion Chief engines, you can get the universal one and then that one remote can control all three or you can use the individual ones. So, but that's the way they work. The remotes are, I think, really well designed for these sets. You know, Lionel was trying to make it super easy for anybody to open these sets and just run them in about 10 minutes. So, you have the forward and reverse knob, which is obviously very intuitive. You've got the whistle or the uh, diesel sound depending what type of engine it is the horn or the whistle you've got crew talk and you've got the bell sound on this particular one okay so depending on the engine you have uh, you'll you'll have your buttons and then you have the on off switch which is nice on the sides to turn it on and off so you don't kill your batteries so really easy uh, to use remote okay so and then it has the engine road number on it right here which in this case is 1969 which matches the road number on the actual engine itself okay so you get the remote uh, they actually give you a little set of extra traction tires which is kind of cool and they give you a little uh, bulb here this is an incandescent bulb so obviously again these sets they're trying to save money and not make them super expensive so um, the average uh, you know buyer that doesn't spend a ton of money on legacy engines uh, can buy these sets and so there's not LEDs inside of them they're just regular incandescents unlike the legacies which of course are LEDs so all right and then you're gonna get a whole bunch of uh, booklets here to talk about um, the instructions for your set obviously but then it has some advertising stuff in here for Lion Chief and join the Lion Collectors Club of America all kinds of uh, stuff there and then you're gonna get your actual engine here which is actually in its own uh, wrapping here so it's got some tape on it that we'll have to take off here so let me get this tape off here to get outside of its uh, plastic wrapping It's funny, they have the same uh, strips on this that they do on the uh, Legacy engines, the little blue uh, ribbons to pull it out of the box, so it's funny how a lot of this stuff is the same. Okay, so there we have our... Uh,
engine. It's got its ribbon so you can pull it out. I usually just dump them out, it's easier. And there's our uh, mystery machine. Now in this particular set, this is based on an FT diesel engine. And actually, you know, for what it is, it's pretty good. I mean, the size is nice on the engine. Um, the paint graphics are super cool. It's got the mystery machine, just like the van would be on the uh, cartoon. Um, on the bottom here, you have... Uh, these are die-cast trucks. Uh, and then... Um, it's got the... Uh, speaker on the bottom here for the sound. I don't know why this has a sort of some scratch on the truck here for the uh, I don't know what the deal with that is. Looks like it had a little problem during in the factory there but obviously you're not gonna be able to see that. Um, there is a coupler in the back. It's not electromagnetic. It's just a normal pull-down plastic coupler. Uh, it's got some nice weight to it though. It's not uh, not really too light. But the graphics look really good. There's no uh, chips on the paint, so the engine looks pretty good. And then if you take out the rest of it here, we've got three cars. So the first one here is a box car. Now again, this is the ready to run line, so these are not scale size box cars, okay? And they're pretty much like every other ready to run line that Lionel's ever done, so it's plastic uh, trucks. They are metal wheels and axles, but they are plastic trucks, plastic couplers. The regular has little buttons on the bottom that go with the uh, track electro couplers, so. But it's a Scooby, uh, you got Scooby snacks here, you've got... Uh, Same graphics on both sides. Cool purple color. It's hard to see probably in the video. It probably looks blue, but it's actually like purple. So, I like that. It's kind of nice. And then the second car that you get Okay, so this is cool. This is obviously built on the 1950s uh, uh, cop and robber car where the cop chases the hobo around the uh, the car and they've basically repeated the same thing here except we got uh, a monster or ghost here chasing uh, Shaggy and Scooby around the uh, the car and they got uh, going around these uh, costumes and rubber masks uh, crates here so it's kind of cool so that will just uh, run. It's pretty much just like the uh, the normal 1950s car. Actually, if you look here, it has the uh, it's just gonna has a little gear on the bottom here with the wheel to make them run around. So they'll always be moving around the car as the uh, the train's running. So that was kind of neat that they did that instead of just doing a regular plain old box car or something. And then the last piece here that comes with it is the caboose. So that's the Mystery Ink caboose. Just got the whole gang on the on the side there. Okay, this is sort of a light blue and again it's like a purple. And it does have contact rollers, which means it is lighted on the inside. So it does have a light, which is probably what that bulb is for. as an extra bulb for the uh, caboose light. Okay, and so that's what comes with it. Now, there is an extra Scooby-Doo box car that is going to be released. It hasn't come out yet, but there's an add-on car that you can get for this set too. So you can uh, get that as soon as that's released. And then the last thing you'll get in the set is the track so I'm not gonna pull all this out here but I can just uh, open it up real quick so you can see
Okay, so this one comes with a whole set of fast track with it. This one happens to be an oval, and um, again, you just snap fast track together and you're plugging your uh, power transformer into the special track. There's one piece that has a special connector on it. You're ready to go. And so that's pretty much it. So let's put this on the layout and power it up and see what it sounds like. Okay, so I put the train on the track. I had to put uh, batteries in the remote and um, the only thing I would say about this is they do make you uh, take this Phillips screw out here to get the battery cover off. In the instructions it says it's for safety purposes. I'm not sure what safety they're trying to do. I mean, they're just uh, AAAs, three AAA batteries. So that's kind of a pain if a kid uh, has their remote dying. They want to just go to the you know, the junk drawer in the kitchen, grab some batteries and put some new ones in. Now the kid has to get there, an adult to uh, get a screwdriver to unscrew that. So I'm not sure why they did that. It would have been easier just to have a little thing that you could, uh, you know, a little latch you could pull up and then have it open up. I mean, you have the same batteries in the remote for your TV or anything else. So you just slide off the cover. So I'm not sure why they had to do that. It's a little bit of a pain for a kid to change them. But um, other than that, that's it. So we're ready to uh, give it a try. Oh, and on the bottom here is the uh, switch right here to um, get it right there. It's right there to turn the sounds on and off if you don't want to hear the sounds. Uh, the instructions do say there's a volume control button, uh, which is supposed to be like right here. Uh, I'm not seeing anything in there. I don't see even if I put a screwdriver. There's no. I don't see a potentiometer down there where you can actually change it. So. I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like the instructions are off a little bit on that. So, and I don't see any other place where you could adjust volume. So, it looks like you probably do it with your remote. Okay, so we got the uh, engine on the track. It's uh, powered up. You can see the track's powered. The lights are on on the engine, and it's just doing this little beep every couple seconds, which basically means it's trying to find the remote. Uh, so, once you turn the remote on, then you will hear the engine start up. So, if we just flip the power switch here. So now we've got the uh, the diesel engine sounds running, and um, really the only thing on the remote here, you can see the red light is on. So what's supposed to happen is as you move forward or reverse, the light will blink and then it'll get faster and slower depending on the speed of the train. So let's try reverse real quick, so we'll just turn the knob a little bit. And you can see it blinking as it speed. And then we'll go forward. So talk about easy to control for a kid. So they say there's a couple announcements on this one. They have like, a, uh, let's see, there's like three stopped announcements, three moving announcements, and then there's another one when it actually stops after you move it. So let's try the announcements here. Try some of the uh, moving announcements, so we'll just make it move and see what it changes.
pretty simple, just uh, some uh, audio from the cartoons, obviously. So let's try the uh, horn. So the bell has sort of a uh, clang to it and then a ghost sound like a uh, ghost sort of laugh. It's kind of funny. So, yeah. You can see the little uh, figures moving here. not bad slow speed control either. I mean, you can actually go pretty slow with it. Next up, so he said, yikes, yikes a zombie. cool um, obviously the uh, sound is not as clear as the rail sounds would be on the legacy engines and stuff like that but for a ready to run set it's pretty cool uh, for kids it'd be great obviously so and uh, let me check here I'm not sure if there's anything else in the manual so let me go grab the uh, Bluetooth app and we'll try it with that instead of the actual handheld remote Okay, so I opened up the Bluetooth remote. It did find the Mystery Machine. You can see it there. If I select it, it says uh, Lion Chief Diesel FT Mystery Machine 1969. So this one actually does have the right information, unlike my uh, H10 did. And then, um, looks like it's connected here. Oh, and I gotta go back here. Hit the connect button. So now we're connected. So let's check the volume here. Yeah, so if you use the Lion Chief app, you can actually control the volume a little bit better on the different things. So that's kind of nice. Because there was no volume control on the bottom of the engine like the manual said that I could find, so. So obviously there's no smoke on this line cheap stuff here, but um, still, it's pretty cool. Um, The only thing about this uh, little speaker system is it uh, it does buzz a little bit like when it's uh, playing its sounds and stuff like that. So the horn is pretty clear and the bell. But you can hear a little uh, buzzing when you do the announcements.
Now, the thing about the Lion Chief ones is that when you disconnect with the disconnect button here, it does actually shut down the engine and just goes into its like search mode where it's just beeping to let you know it's trying to find the, either the remote or the app. The legacy engines don't actually shut down, they just keep running. You have to actually turn the power off, so but so yeah, pretty easy. Turn the remote, it instantly connects again. The only thing you can't do with the remote itself is uh, adjust the volume. As for, well, maybe you can. Hold on, let me check that actually because I could be lying. I think I did see something in the manual where one of the buttons acts as a shift button and then you use the throttle to actually change the volume. So actually, let me look that up real quick. I thought I saw that somewhere in here. Yeah, so you can actually change the volume with the remote. Uh, the uh, announcement button doubles as a shift button when the engine is stopped. So if the engine stopped, you hold down the announcement and then turn your dial, you can adjust your volume. So you can hear, if you can sort of hear how low it is right now, we're going to turn it up to full volume. So I'm going to hold down the announcement button right here and then turn the dial. And it turned it way up. So you hold down the announcement and adjust your volume that way. So down, that's basically almost off. Yep, so you can do everything on the remote that you can do on the Line Chief app. So that's pretty much it. So that is the Mystery Machine set. Um, and I'll just wait for the extra Scooby-Doo car to come out, but just a, a cool little set from uh, brings back some uh, Saturday morning cartoon memories. So, um, hope you enjoyed the video on the uh, new Lion Chief Mystery Machine set. And uh, so far everything works perfectly on it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.